Have you ever clocked in anywhere before? No. Have you ever had a real job? No. Okay. What are wells for? <laughs> you hold on real short. We just have it. <laughs> no, you can't just have it. <laughs> it's not a soup kitchen. Wait. My earring's gone! Are you s***? Oh my god, I'm gonna cry! What's wrong with you guys? My diamond earring came up in the ocean and it's gone. Okay, there's people that are dying. What does that mean, soup kitchen? While it clearly didn't start with Paris Hilton, the rise of the celebutante, a person famous primarily for being the child of someone wealthy and famous, came inescapably to my attention at that point. As shows like Keeping Up with the Kardashians and other like-minded reality shows were disgorged into the airwaves, I routinely found myself wondering why the hell I even knew any of these people's names, let alone was supposed to give a single shit about anything they said or did. As near as I could tell, none of these people had any particular talent or skill, aside, one supposes, from a gift for self-promotion. None of them were especially interesting, and while it may be a side effect of editing, most of them came across as vapid and or stupid. Certainly, they didn't seem like people you'd put in charge of your kid, or your dog, or your country. Yet, here we are. Star of the reality show The Apprentice, Donald J. Trump, is President of the United States. This boastful, narcissistic, talentless buffoon is the leader of the free, for now, world Instead of simply being the punchline in a Bloom County or Doonesbury cartoon strip, this man is now responsible for making life or death decisions for nearly 320 million people in the U.S., not to mention the rest of the world, who remain poised to see if a Twitter outburst will result in nuclear extinction. At least with W, who was no mental giant himself, he was surrounded by people who, while still vicious and heartless, were not inherently stupid. W's inner circle were at least experienced in politics. They may not have followed the rules, but at least they knew them. Trump, on the other hand? Well, his senior advisor is Jared Kushner, a 36-year-old real estate developer who looks like he should be hassling the Goonies about how his dad's going to foreclose on all of their houses. His ability to get into university seems tied primarily to his father's donations to those universities. A father, we might add, who was convicted of tax evasion, illegal campaign donations, and witness tampering. And Kushner seems mostly famous for spending $1.8 billion of other people's money to buy a building. Well, and, and for marrying Ivanka Trump. Ivanka herself should be of little more consequence to America than a Kardashian, a pretty person born into money whose primary business seems, like her father's, to be putting her name on expensive retail items. She has no official position in the White House, but seems to have access to everything that a senior advisor to the president would have. And given Melania Trump's absence, seems to be serving as first lady. Eric and Donald Jr. are presently responsible for running Trump's businesses while he's president. The two of them are described as, quote, American businessmen and former reality personalities, end quote. And they look like they should be hassling the tri lambs at Adams College. Eric at least manages to fundraise for St. Jude's Children's Hospital through golfing events, which seem primarily hosted at his father's courses. Well, hell, even when he's doing something good, it still seems tainted by serving as a promotional and profit tool for his father. For fuck's sake. Aside from Trump himself, who can't avoid getting in front of a camera or a microphone, whose ridiculous, blustering personality is at least good for a joke or two, whether he's hawking pizza for Pizza Hut, or shaving Vince McMahon's head at WrestleMania, or fooling around with Rudy Giuliani and drag, or singing the theme song from Green Acres? Whatever. I shouldn't even know who these people are. They should be no more significant to me or to our country than any other wealthy white people in New York with no talent, skill, or responsibilities. They shouldn't be worth the time or effort it took to write this broadside. Instead, Kushner has been given a newly created position in the White House Office of American Innovation, which is supposed to use business as a model for running government. While he's also quote, driving foreign and domestic policy as well as decisions on presidential personnel, end quote, 
and serving as Trump's lead advisor on relations with China, Mexico, Canada, and the Middle East. Some of that sounds a lot like that's supposed to be the president's job. Did did you elect Kushner president? Because I sure didn't. Nor did I vote for Ivanka to run her operations out of the White House using White House resources. Or for the Trump sons to continue running his businesses and using the leverage of Trump's presidency to increase personal wealth. I didn't vote for any of it, because I didn't want to turn the office of the presidency into a goddamn reality show. Aside from the fact that it's a terrible way to operate a diplomatic and leadership office, reality shows thrive on conflict. No one watches them to see someone shuffle papers all fucking day, or sit in countless meetings about bureaucratic fine-tuning, or negotiating trade deals over wheat. They watch to see shit explode. They watch to see who's going to bitch slap who, who's cheating on what, and what kind of trendy accessory they're supposed to wear now. And that's what America voted for. Well, some of it. Well, not really even a majority of voters, I guess. Regardless, part of me wants to just throw my hands up in the fucking air and walk away. To just dismiss the American people as a bunch of brainless rubes who can't be trusted with the good China. To just surrender and watch TV, play video games, and just fuck off until the inevitable end of this once proud nation. But then I remember... The majority of people who voted, voted against Trump. I remember writing a broadside about the largest fucking protest ever the day after Trump's inauguration. I remember that Trump and essentially his entire administration is under investigation for colluding with the fucking Russians to circumvent our election and our fucking sovereignty. And I remember that the elections are coming. Not just in 2018, but something like half a dozen special elections this year. And those things keep the show going. They keep me going. They keep me from just giving up. Because those elections represent the most important thing to remember when dealing with shitty reality shows. You can change the fucking channel.